I'm what you'd call a lazy son of a bitch. And it's a good thing this channel's not monetized, huh? There's only a few things in this world that would appeal to me. And the effort to pursue one of these passions is not part of those several things. So, because I don't have the will to go out and frolic like a fucking fool through a field of tulips and daisies, to be honest, I haven't done anything outdoors related in years. And I just sit in front of my prestigious TV. It's nothing new or fancy. At my most generous guess, it would probably be 12 inches. That's what she said. The upside was that it was a flat screen. I also had satellite TV, which was another thumbs up, I guess. Hey guys, scary stories here. Like I said in the last video, we're going back to creepypastawiki.com. Just as warning, this one's a little darker than usual. It's about an alligator girl. But not in the way you'd think, unfortunately. It's called... Alligator Girl on channel ASKY. I hope you enjoy. Sitting on your ass in front of an idiot box won't get you any success. It won't get you a better social life, and it sure as hell won't get you laid. But it has shown me many awful things that I will be able to keep with me. I'll always remember one program in particular that had me out of my seat going through my neighborhood looking for the key to my own safety. It's all because of one program that I hate, infomercials. I hate nothing more than seeing paid programming instead of an actual title. No info, no story. Just some host selling America its next top useless gadget. What made this infomercial so much different from all the others was not what they were advertising, but how they were advertising it. It was roughly 15 minutes long, and it aired late at night, like most infomercials are. More and more, as hours pass, a new question pops into my head. Recently, I've been asking myself, how did it air without struggle during the storm? Who put that up for the cable company to air? How did it even air on TV? My mind can never stay at rest, I swear. It was roughly a month and a half ago when I was up late during a humid summer night. I think it was about 3 a.m. and it was storming out. Since I was sitting on my gradually fattening ass in front of the idiot box, I started to get a little annoyed at the searching for signal message that played for prolonged periods of time. When it did disappear, it was temporary and sometimes all that would play would be a digital glitch of whatever was playing at the moment. Then, right back to searching for the goddamn signal. I grew tired from the silence of the television. I wanted to hear cars crashing from those caught on tape shows, incoherent screams of an audience at a pro wrestling event, or even the laugh of SpongeBob and Patrick. I picked up my remote, hidden in the nooks and crannies of a slowly aging and breaking recliner I was sitting in. I hit the guide button to see what was playing on the other channels I normally watch. Most of the titles were gone because of the storm. The satellite was still trying to collect data. I was annoyed and about fed up with the cable. I was going to turn it off and go to bed, but after scrolling up one more page, I saw a text in a program box. Alright, I thought to myself, but that alright quickly turned to a for fuck's sakes. That program I thought I was going to see was titled Paid Programming. I decided to humor myself. Most of the other channels I watched were still glitchy and gathering data. I'd rather try to watch something I didn't like so much without any glitches than the best show ever and miss all the greatest parts because of them. Rolling my eyes, I highlighted the box with the words Paid Programming to see the info and the channel which sparked some questions and oddness. The info for paid programming wasn't what was usually in the info for infomercials, which was usually just the title itself again. The info said, supplies are running out. Not only did these words create an odd and curious atmosphere, they also gave me a feeling of deja vu. 
That feeling that you've been there before and experienced this all at some point, though I couldn't be sure of anything at the moment. My head then went to the channel after it was done, trying to figure out the info, but failing. The channel's name and number is one I've not seen before. The channel was number 73, which I don't even remember ordering, or even watching. What was even odder was its name. ASKY. What does that even stand for? Why am I only seeing this now? More questions. As if I needed more to comprehend. Eventually, the thinking grew tiresome. I didn't want to think. I just wanted to fry a few more brain cells, staring at some host, make a fool out of himself trying to make cash off of some stupid product most people probably won't even need or use. The program was only 15 minutes long. It was scheduled to air at 3.15 a.m. and end at 3.30 a.m. Not having very many other choices, I highlighted the block and pressed select on the remote. Static. That's all it was. All that was visible was fucking static. With little hopes of seeing something I had, dropped like a dumbbell. But wait. Static? Satellite TV doesn't show static when the receiver's on. It's only supposed to show a searching for signal message on a black screen. Why was there static? It went on for two minutes, and I just sat there gazing into it. I guess I was hoping that my mind would entertain me and show me a face on the screen just to fuck with me. I was getting desperate, if you couldn't tell. Just when I was about to turn the TV off and call it a night, the loud white noise stopped, and a sound that was very faintly remembered played in my mind. More deja vu, more stuff to think about, and I thought you were supposed to fry your brain watching this shit. I focused my attention back on the TV and it appeared to be a bog, or a swamp of some sort. Bullfrogs' booming voices could be heard, dragonflies could be seen, as well as lily pads and dirty, muddy water. I took more notice to the scenery because it seemed to hold a sacred place in my mind. I paid no attention to the mumbles of voices in the background of the shot. It was 3.18 when an Indonesian man stepped in front of the camera. Finally, something was going to happen. Oh yeah, something's going to happen. Only to be bullshitted again for another minute. He was talking to somebody outside the shot, and seeing as how the camera shook a little bit during the response to the man in front of the camera, I figure it was the cameraman being spoken with. The man in front of the camera turned away from the screen to his right, left from my perspective, and yelled something. The yell was full of rage, like it said something hostile or violent. Maybe a threat? At 319, the Indonesian man spoke with a heavy accent. So heavy, most people probably wouldn't even understand what he was saying. I don't know how, but I was able to decipher most of what this man was trying to say. I'm definitely not going to try to do an Indonesian accent, so... He's going to sound very white. Actually, I'll let... We'll see what Microsoft Sam says. Let him get cancelled. Good evening. We have yet again another high quality product. Just kidding. Good evening. We have yet again our high quality product available for sale. Stay tuned to watch us perform three tests with it to show how top quality it is. What are they selling? The host made a motion with his hand that said, Come here. Now he was motioning towards his left, which was the right of my screen from my perspective. At 3.20, a large alligator appeared. It had jagged, rough-looking skin, and its teeth looked like they had been sharpened with a hard mineral. It was like something out of a horror movie. It wasn't that creepy though, because of all that deja vu, I felt like this could very well be part of them as well. At 3.21, the host said, Okay. First, we'll test out the quality of this creature's skin. His hand reached up, above the view of the camera, and he was handed something. Bringing it back into view, we see it as a sharp, serrated blade. 
With absolutely no expression of fear whatsoever, the host casually walked up to the gator like it was a domesticated pet. My heart dropped as he began to saw at the skin of the gator. Very oddly, and predictably, the alligator did nothing at all. He just lay down and took the cutting, like it was a normal thing. The host finished up at 3.23 a.m. and said, See? Not one scratch is left on the skin. And he was telling the truth. Not one scratch could be found. I was almost impressed by it. I kind of wanted to see if it would cut it. We seem to be running out of time, so we shall begin the other two tests at the same time using the same subject. He said it all with a smile. We shall test the cutting capability of the teeth and the power of the jaw. He then backed away from the camera and looked to his right and screamed. He made a quick and violent gesture for whatever it was to get where he was. Screaming could be heard off screen and the host got fed up and walked towards the source of the scream. At 3.25, the host came back into shot with somebody over his shoulder fighting him to let them down. It appeared to be a teenage girl. She had jeans on, which seemed to be dirty from all the mud, and a long sleeve shirt. She obviously wasn't from anywhere that infomercial was being filmed. She had no accent, and in fact, sounded American. What should have been a shock for me was simply an expression of indifference. A poker face of sorts. The host was having trouble controlling the girl and gestured for help from the cameraman. The view shook once, and a fat man wearing a dirty shirt and khaki shorts was now in view. The cameraman grabbed her by the hair and hit her in the face with a hard haymaker. The sound of the blow was impressive. It was enough to control her and settle her down, for the moment. It made it easier for the host and the cameraman to grab her by the wrists and ankles and toss her to the left, where the alligator was. And that's when my heart dropped a little. Also, this part's not PG. The alligator wasted little time. As soon as the girl landed with a thud, the alligator bit her at once and consumed her entire arm. She let out a wail, painful to hear for a normal person, and with that was heavy gasping and sobbing. None of that noise lasted for long, as the alligator bit the side of her neck. The screams turned to gurgling. Blood, I thought. The alligator let go and dug into everything else like it were a feast before death. It went from the neck to the head, consuming it whole. The cracking and crushing sound of the skull made me flinch a little. From there it went to the torso, to the legs, and so on. At 328, there was no longer a body for the alligator to tear. Pieces were all over the swampy floor. Even the nearby water had a faint red tint to it. The camera went back to the host, who said nothing. He just stared into the camera. He stared through the TV. He stared into me. The stare is what sent chills down my spine. It was like he was watching me, waiting for me to move or say something. When I did move, his eyes followed and this continued until 3.29 a.m. when he said, order it soon because we're running low on supplies. Even while saying that, he had the soul-piercing stare in his eyes. Then the channel went back to static and the infomercial was over. All of that night was over to me, but what stuck to me was that stare. From then on, I couldn't sleep as well as I used to. When I closed my eyes, I saw his. When my eyes were open, I saw his entire face. It was happening so often, I considered learning how to live with it. Eventually, I saw him on the television again. His entire face with that stare would be on for five minutes, then it would cut to regular programming. I grew fed up with it. I didn't want to see his face anymore. I ended up tossing out that satellite receiver and started reading to forget about him. However, in the small sewers of my deepest system of thought, I had to go back over those questions. I had to ask why I was so sick of seeing this guy's face. 
I had to look through all my thoughts that weren't fried from that idiot box. Did I not want to see him because of that stare on the screen that I hated so much? Or was it because he gave me that stare in the past and said, We're low on supplies, so help me with this girl, or our restock will be instant. It creeps me out what he threatened. It creeps me out even more than the thought of being watched through the television screen. Huh? Well, what'd you think of that? Pretty messed up, huh? To be honest, I was confused when I first read it. Uh, simple brain, but... Reading the comments, it kind of all made sense. So, let me share them with you. Quiggles, or however you say that, says, Overall, it was very well written. Great build-up, nice imagery, and pretty creepy. One thing I didn't understand, though, was how you were creeped out only by the man staring, and not by the girl being mutilated by an alligator. I would be more disturbed by that than some guy's soul-piercing stare. Also, the beginning dragged on a little bit, but besides those points, it was pretty good. 8 out of 10. And I just want to say to that point, before we get to the next comment, uh, I think I'd be pretty disturbed by the TV staring at me. I think I would assume that the alligator bit's fake, CGI or AI or something, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit harder to fake somebody staring at you through the TV. Reminds me of that, I don't know if it's a creepypasta or what, but the YouTube ad where somebody got an ad of an Asian woman just staring at him or something. He walked around his room and then the, the lady on the TV just kept staring at him. Does anybody remember that? I don't know. Anyways, Tyler says, It was one of the best I've read. 9 out of 10. Reg? 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 Longtime reader of this site, and creepypastas in general, never felt the need to make a profile before, but after reading your story, had to, just so I could say how well written and thought out this was. Loved it. 9 out of 10. Yeah, there's a lot of comments. But then we get to Ranks Grown, the author of the piece. He says, I'm gone for two years, and I come back to see people like this piece of poop? I guess he tried to keep it PG in the comments, but not in the story. Let it be known that I don't remember editing this, and this went through some heavy editing for the better. It was a piece of poop before, but now it's actually pretty alright. Thanks to whoever did the editing of the story, let me just say the following to you guys, which is what I said when I left comments on the YouTube videos that did this story. The story was a simplified rough draft of something more complex. I turned out to be the real lazy son of a bitch by posting it without asking myself if it's worth it. ASKY was meant to be a bad pun on memory loss of the protagonist. Ask why? The story was unfinished and was meant to go like this. Indonesian man likes to sell modified exotic pets. Protagonist needs money. Protagonist is hired by Indonesian man to operate camera for underground infomercial. Protagonist becomes disturbed with animal mods and watching the death of a stranger and doesn't want to continue. Indonesian man demands him to, or else he would get the same treatment. Protagonist is so disturbed he uses the money for a new TV and cable, and watching so much TV causes him to experience memory loss, hence the deja vu. The infomercial was actually supposed to be written as his memory coming back to him, not an actual infomercial airing. Hopefully that clears up my actual intentions. Again, thanks to whoever did the editing. Dr. Time 60... <laughs> Dr. Time 69 says, An alligator would never eat a human. It would kill one, but never eat them. Tasty pasta, though. Which, like, didn't a grandma get eaten in Florida the other day by an alligator? She was walking her dog or something? I'm pretty sure alligators eat humans. I don't know. I thought they ate anything. I saw a video once where, like, one attacked another alligator, and he just bit off the other alligator's arm and ate it. Anyways, we'll cut it there for now. This video is getting really long. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. I hope you enjoyed our little spooky trek into the alligator channel. ASCII something. Maybe consider subscribing. Trying to get to a thousand, so, you know, every little bit helps.
And yeah, say hi down below. I hope you have a good night. I hope you take care of yourself. And I hope I see you in the next one. Have a good night. Bye for now.